What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode here at Kibby Tech. Uh, let's just dive right in. Here we got some brakes on the table. So this is a Willwood six piston radial mount caliper. So this will be for the driver's side. I always do a 90 fitting off of here, pointing up. So when you run the brake line, you can do a little loop in it. So if you have to take this off, you have some slack in the soft line to where you can pull this off. Anyway, this is part of our big brake kit that we came up with for the Raptor. Yeah, so basically this radial to lug mount adapter is from Willwood. We had these brackets laser cut and then we machined these two spacers and then this will bolt on to a stock Raptor rear end and like the Curry Raptor rear ends that we, uh, we use in some of the Raptor builds. So uh, we wanted to come up with our own big brake kit. Didn't want to just buy an off the shelf big brake kit that utilizes all the stock brackets. So we just made all our own stuff. But yeah, I have one already set up on the truck. We'll go check that out right now. All right, over here on the Raptor, see we got the big brake kit on. Caliper's just not tight right now, but take these nuts off here. And then, you know, comes on and on and off just like that. No issues there. We had to, we shimmed it up about 50 thou to get a little more clearance on the rotor. It was getting a little tight to the inside here. And then the rotor adapter, you can see gets pretty tight in here, but everything clears so no issues there pretty much all the cool stuff is going on on the on the back side we even made an adapter bracket here for the stock wheel speed sensor so you see we made this bracket here the factory bracket bolts in it puts it in factory location and then uh, i just happen to have some extra 12 points in my uh, secret stash of aircraft hardware so i added some safety wire to them they are through bolted figured you know they had the safety wire holes there so might as well utilize them pretty cool big brake kit 14 inch inch and a quarter thick rotor six piston caliper these are the same calipers we put on like uh like the chrome truck and those work really well so i was happy with those and uh this should work even better you know because it's got the factory master cylinder factory pedal factory brake booster maybe down the line we'll add a handbrake or something in there and we also got innovate lug nuts to go with the innovate wheels and Obviously you can see this is spinning right now and the drive shaft is not. That's because we do not have axles yet. They haven't shown up. That's all we're waiting on. Take this cover off, put the axles in, fill it up with uh, Maxima and then go drive it. All right, under here, under the Raptor, you can see we got the exhaust all wrapped up. We got the two piece drive line in. If you know Raptors, they come with a single piece drive line, which goes right into the transfer case. And that is a big old drive line and that doesn't work for really anything that we do. So we did a custom two piece drive line and we ran a 1410 U joint on the front section. And then this U joint and the rear U joint are a 1480. And I believe it's a three and a half inch 095 tube. So super strong drive line. Figured we needed it with all this horsepower. And then we built this cool carrier bearing cross member. We built this mount for the carrier bearing. And then we tie in the upper link pivots to that cross member as well. So everything's kind of tied in under here. So, you know, an upper link mount's not just hanging there by itself, wanting to rip out of the frame. So we always try to tie everything in together. I see the big Maglin flow muffler there, all three inch stainless on V bands. And then we ended up coming out of that Maglin flow muffler. And then this side's pretty simple. And then this side cuts across all the way over here. And then we ran two more small mufflers or whatever you want to call them. They're pretty much like a straight through. We ran them parallel with the upper links and uh, we added these just to get some more sound out of this thing because this thing was super loud before. When you get on the throttle, you pretty much didn't know what was going on. It just made a bunch of noise. So now this thing actually fires up and doesn't make too much noise. So it'll be nice for daily driving and uh, obviously we haven't driven it yet. I'm excited to see what it'll sound like, you know, under under throttle now. That's pretty much it under here. Let's go fire this thing up. All right, back over here on the table, we have uh, some lower A-arms and these are for 2019 and up 1500 Silverado two wheel drive and four wheel drive. So this is a direct OEM replacement. So it's all 4130 TIG welded. The stock shock or like the King aftermarket or any aftermarket shock will bolt into here. It has a uniball at the end, which uh, we're gonna try on this first prototype truck, but we might end up be switching this end to a ball joint end just to simplify things. So this will bolt right in. You could reuse your OEM hardware here. Uh, sway bar, we do a Heim end link adapter. So we do a male Heim alignment rod in here and then a female rod in there. And then we do a little spacer here and then this will bolt directly up with your, uh, your stock sway bar. So we do make the billet upper arms for that model of a truck and then you can put these on and it's a good upgrade from your stock unit, a lot stronger, obviously aesthetically 
It's a lot nicer looking. You gain a lot of strength and a lot of, like the bushings here at the frame will pivot a lot more freely, like say the OEM bushings, which are like vulcanized into the arm and it just kind of binds as it pivots. So this will pivot a little more free. So uh, if you don't want to go a full long travel route, this is uh, the perfect solution for you. And we got these loaded up on our website. Back over here on Dan's truck, all the sheet metal that is done so far is all 100% welded in. Seat mount bungs are in, panels came out really nice. Chase spent a bunch of time on this thing. So we got the centers mostly done, the centerpiece and the firewall's done. Two access panels are there, those are done. So now that this is done, we're gonna jump to the front suspension. We're gonna get all the steering, the ram assist, the A-arms and spindles and upper arms all back in place and then we're gonna start placing all the front shock mounts and bump stop mounts and work on those. Figure we're talking about brakes, so might as well show you the Brembos. Uh, I think we showed those to you a couple weeks ago, but we got them here mounted on the tube works rear end. So these are uh, Pro-Am trophy truck hubs. So it's a three and a quarter trophy truck hub, and it also runs a 14 inch, inch and a quarter rotor. And then these are big bad boy uh, trophy truck Bem Brembo, monoblock, one piece, caliper. It's pretty much the baddest of the baddest right here when it comes to braking. This guy wanted to run all the good parts, so I was like, hey, we should probably run these Brembos. So we went ahead and ordered these up. They actually worked on our caliper mounts that we already make. So we make this caliper mount for a Pro-Am six-piston and a Willwood six-piston caliper. And it had the same bolt spread, so I just I put that mount on there and this lined right up. So if we didn't have to design or make any new caliper mounts, you know, we have a box of those things already made. So that made that pretty easy. Other side's done as well. We just don't have the caliper on it. Next up, we'll get these mounted on the front spindles as well, matched with the front trophy truck hubs. And uh, yeah, this thing will be, uh, have some serious hopping power. Anywho, back here on the D90, you see we got the front firewall all welded out. So that was uh, quite a bit of welding. He's still working on it right now, but getting everything welded, pulling these out to get into everything so we can get the front firewall all sealed up, get it ready so we can get the motor and exhaust and transmission back in, start mounting some accessories. We got the dry sump tank, we got a mount. Kind of start getting all the parts on it. You know, I want to get to a point to where everything, all the major fabrication is done, and then we can start tearing this thing back apart, send the chassis out to powder coat, send the body out to paint and or line x and maybe interior before the cage goes back in so i don't know i'll have to figure that one out when we get there but uh solid progress on this thing all right back over here in the machine shop we have those trailing arms we showed you last week so we got op one and two done on both of the arms uh next step we're gonna pocket out the top for the shock pockets and then we do a big relief cut basically along the whole top edge up here and back here kind of give the top a little like concave little pocketing going on there take a bunch of unnecessary weight out pretty stoked on these same dimension as our last 55 we've done just a new pocket layout i don't like making the same thing too many times so as you've noticed we update a lot of our stuff the more we make it so we come up with a better idea or just another pocket design or just another way to make it stronger or save weight or look better so we'll always implicate that into the latest parts and then uh, over here, we have some custom one-off sway bar arms. So these are actually two inches longer than the sway bar arms that we make. So our buddy Brett King needed a set made, so we're just doing a one-off set for him, and then, uh, then we'll be back on the trailing arms, hopefully uh, tomorrow. So this is what we got done today on these guys, and then we're gonna flip it, do the next ops, cut out pockets and stuff like that, and then do the other side. Anywho, back over here on the computer, we got Mike working on our Colorado triangulated four link. So you've seen like the white ZR2 and the blue one we built, those have a Panhard style three link. So the blue one's gonna come back in for a triangulated four link and fuel cell with sway bar. So we're designing all those parts right now. So we're designing the cell and the cradle with the sway bar. I uh, got a tube works rear end in there, all tabbed out. And then we mirrored the upper link geometry to do triangulated four link. So we'll keep the single upper link bracket on the frame that we made, and then we'll just add one on the other side to make it a triangulated four link. Pretty much the same thing you see on like the Raptor that we just showed you, 
And these lower billet links are a 48 center to center, which uh, suit the smaller truck a little better. You could run a 2.5 or 3.0, 16 or 18 internal bypass coilover with the clevis end on this one. Still gets good travel and everything and works really good as the pan hard setup, but we wanted to add the fuel cell on that other truck. So that's why we're changing all this up. So let's see what Matt's up to for some real excitement. What's up everyone? What's up, big podcast guy over here? Matt did a podcast like two weeks ago, and he didn't even didn't even tell us about it. About a month ago, actually. See? I don't know but if we want to show too much of that yet. I mean, they can see it, right? No, not until we start cutting things out, and it's we're cutting it out on our laser, and it's on our fixture table. Because this one, I mean, this guy doesn't care if we show it. He wants to see it. Fun fact, he found us via YouTube. So that's pretty cool. So basically, like last week, someone asked like, oh, would you build like an Ultra 4 style pre-runner? So basically that's kind of what this one is going to be. So A-arms up front, we're running 7-4 weld portals up front, tube works rear end, billet third members front and rear, dry sump LS7, 480 in a reed case, Atlas 2 transfer case. It's gonna have a small bench in the back, so it'll be a two-seater. We wanted a little bit of room so you can put like his dogs back there, which is pretty cool. It's also going to be an open platform did i say that too is that too much yeah so i guess yeah it's pretty open we're gonna make the whole body on it and probably just laser cut the whole body out of aluminum but it's not a jeep technically technically but it will be open i think we're gonna have yeah. like a flip down windshield and have like a soft top or we'll do like aluminum top on it probably two five three five kings all the way around billet trailing arms billet upper arms billet uprights so basically the only thing welded on the suspension will be the lower arms and the rear end housing then everything else, 100% billet, no spare tire, uh, running 40s. It'll be kind of mixed between a race car and a pre-runner. Ultra 4 play car, there you go. Not a race car, it's not gonna be built to be racing. He just wants to have fun with it, that's what he'll get. Then another cool one we got coming up, it has nothing to do with off-road. I don't know how much we can talk about that one. None. None, that's gonna be a <laughs> That is not that meant is. for the <laughs> and it won't have big <laughs> It'll do really fast <laughs> But that's pretty close, actually. Probably in the next month or two. I'm gonna go with the next four to six weeks. It'll be done completely. <laughs> yeah. Lots of cool one-off projects that aren't, you know, what we usually build. Anything else you want to add? I can't show anything that I'm doing. So it's hard to talk about what I can't show. I mean, we can show that. I just don't want to yet. Because there's a couple things I want to change. Well, going back to that open cab design. <laughs> you ever seen Wayne's World? That's an old man's movie. I'm too young. You're f***ing older than me. Here, I'll do, I'll do one too. What does he... You can't read Spanish. What does it even say? It doesn't say anything. It says Ryan. Ryan has a mangina. Even some of the parents chimed in and I did too for a little bit. Brandon has a mangina. Am I going to do all the talking? Riny Grower. I don't know how to say that. Sweet AF. Does your tube CAD software parametrically generate the interlocking notches on the miters or is that something that gets added manually? Yeah, so anything like that, it's all 100% just manual. by hand. You have to put a tab and slot for anything, any, any tubes that are inter interlocking, but there are tools for mitering and notching and coping and stuff like that. But even those still need some work. You still have to normalize them afterwards, which there is no tool to do that. It's a little bit of a process, so. SolidWorks or Fusion 360? I see you use both. Do you 3D scan the truck frames? Do you get the CAD files from the manufacturers? That's another one for Matt. Uh, it's neither Fusion or SolidWorks. It's Autodesk Inventor. Mike is actually using Fusion 360 though. Odd question, but what is the gold bucket fixture hanging in the corner from the ceiling in the CAD design room? It's just some weird religious thing. No, it had a plant in it, but it's a dead now. I think we need to get a new one up there. Out of everything, yeah. asked about the pot. <laughs> Miles Sloan. How did you and Matt meet? How did you land him as an employee? Always admired his work. Love seeing y'all's business grow. 
You just mm-hmm. walked in one day. I did actually walk in one day. And then uh, I showed up for an interview, brought my computer, did a quick CAD drawing, did a weld test, and then... <laughs> That's funny. We yeah. still laugh about that. Yeah, Take I haven't the... welded yet. <laughs> actually, I did weld one thing. You tacked a brake line bulkhead tab on one time. Actually, I tack welded all the coolant lines for the race Jeep. And, and actually did all the tubes for that, so... And bulkheads as well. But yeah, who's keeping track? (laughs) Yeah, then a week later, uh, I started showing up on the weekends, did a little bit of side work, and then got hired on full-time six months, six to nine months later. 69 months? No, six to nine months. To nine? Matt, status report. Uh, I started November of 2018. But who's keeping track? Who's keeping track? Oh, here's another one. Go away, son. That's his name. Your thoughts on cantilever and then this whole thing about asking or why he wants it. No, I don't like cantilevers. End of the end of story on that one. All right. Well, that wraps it up for today. Take it home, Matt. Take it home, Ryan. Take it home, Mike. <laughs> Take it home, Troy. <laughs> Take it home, Troy. If you, uh, if you like the content, just uh, like and subscribe. Like, and, subscribe, uh, share the page. Add more comments, ask more questions. Tell Go your to our friends. website and buy everything that we make. Tell your friends that you need a lanyard or a keychain, keychain or hat. <laughs> and that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Chicken grease. <laughs> what the <laughs> f- <laughs>